is that people will willingly blindfold themselves, then he doesn't have to do any more work because everyone's walk around blind. And then also, like there, there was an interesting book we found called "The Temple of the Center of Time." Yeah, it it seems so complicated. I don't understand it yet myself. So we might have to make our own video about it. I but think a, we were gonna. But the point is, is it's it was no Sir Thomas, right? Who wrote it? No, it, it was, was uh, no uh, Isaac Newton. Newton, that's it. Newton. He had right. figured out a formula that nautical miles, that every event, if you take the year. And transfer that to nautical miles. It will measure from the event that that the place that event happened to Israel. His argument was that Israel was the center of time, and that it's the clock that controls everything. And not only that, but he had a specific number that everything used, which means even he knows the importance of numbers. Yeah, and he had the mathematic. He had figured out mathematical formulas to a, a lot of stuff that. Again, if you take it in context with this, the years he came up with, he named the last, the end of the earth that year. It's all lining up. It's fascinating, not saying it's canon and it's the, you know, the word of God, but he obviously was a brilliant man. He understood gravity. That's where we got, got gravity from. Yeah. He understood uh, principles of science that we can't even fathom. And this to him was like us reading the numbers. You know, he'd go, oh, well, this happened. How many nautical miles was it? It's crazy. So, you know, there, obviously the world and the universe is mathematical. So, again, God speaks to us through numbers. And some people, you know, especially those of the autism uh, spectrum and things, they, they can see numbers like we, you know, see the air. I mean, they just, to, the, to them, this makes complete sense, you know, and... Maybe that's just kind of how we are, but yeah. you know, numbers always make sense to me. Yeah, so it's like, hopefully, we can we have convinced you enough that it's it's not of the devil. Clearly, God has a purpose with all these numbers. Yeah, um, and they actually matter. You know, I mean, obviously, you're not going to go into your life and notice that every single day numbers are appearing everywhere or something. But it when things are super important in our um clearly of God, you know, like if God's moving to do something, those numbers might pop up, you yeah. know, it won't happen most mundane things, but if something needs to happen, sometimes you'll notice those numbers when you look back on on dates and times and whatnot. Right, yeah, because God is trying to speak to you in a different way. You just didn't notice. People are like, yeah. oh, God doesn't show me signs or there's no signs. There's There, there really is signs all around uh, yeah. if you know where to look. So, and God really does speak in many different languages, one of them being numbers and math, if you know how to look. Um, and, and there's still, some some of you watching are probably going, I still can't do it. I can't stand numbers. I can't even handle you saying the number four. You know, yeah. that's just not your thing. But for those that do, under you know, and this is just going to blow your mind when you start really looking into it. Yeah, and, and like... I'm sure there is a slippery slope to this where you can kind of go too crazy. So yeah. you kind of hold back. But even then, uh, uh, even I've had a personal uh, experience where I noticed uh, I had like some doubts about it, something. And I looked into the Bible using those numbers just as to see like um, just for fun if those numbers lined up. Because I was like, well, if this is so important, maybe it would, you know, because I had some doubts about this thing. And the numbers lined up perfectly. And one of those numbers was my lucky number. So it didn't even have any biblical significance. It only had personal significance. Yeah. And and then on that very first, it was talking exactly about what I was struggling with. Yeah. You know, by name. <laughs> so it was like one of those things where I was like, okay, so sometimes God will give you answers to questions through those numbers. Yeah. And it's also kind of crazy it can work considering the Bible was not written specifically for me, you know, but, still but somehow it proves works. that it's a living word yeah. somehow, even though it was printed, you know, that far back and it's been edited and, you know, and changed in different versions. They still yeah. kept the verses all the same and the numbers all the same. Somehow it's still a living word. I mean, that always blew my mind that I'm like, I could be reading an entirely different version than a pastor or something. And we get different meanings personally out of each verse but somehow it still universally fits, even after hundreds of you know of years. It's crazy. Yeah. And like people have done other things, like the Bible code, which yeah. I still understand. But the idea is that they use the the the, the words in the Bible and put them like a grid or whatever, and they can actually get um, words out of the Bible that are intersecting, 
and, and like with dates or something like that. Yeah. Some crazy something like that. But they, they actually figured out that the Bible had predicted events. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't quite understand that. You know, that one's like really confusing. It's like you have yeah. to be a real scientist to understand it. You do, and for some reason, God has not allowed it out to the general public. I, you know, the yeah, because it it seems to be so accurate that it would actually mess with things if it was out to the public. Right, and I should should preface it with, you would have to be able to know the future to even look for the future because you have to look up words, and so you wouldn't know what to search for and. There is, you know, you're all going to go look it up anyways. There is a public search, but it only allows three words at a time. You can't really find anything with that. You just can't. And they knew it. So I believe it was a rabbi that discovered it and, you know, super genius. And he has never, you know, made it completely public except to a few friends. And again, they, the guy that wrote the book on it, he's not a believer and he made it available to him. And he went kind of, you know, nuts trying to tear into it and predict the future. And he couldn't. You have to know the future. You have to know what you're looking for. Yeah. So, But it, all it proved to me was, again, it's a living word, possibly a computer language. And that's what this said was <laughs> the Bible can be read as a modern day computer language. So, again, it morphed into current technology and current history. It's just it's a living word. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, well, so. that, that's the concept that's kind of hard to wrap your mind around that it morphed. Yeah. But basically, the way it's set up, everything in um, the way that humans have progressed for technology and stuff have fallen in line with God's will in order to keep in line with whatever way the, the Bible is set up. Or at the very least, God was aware of how we would make our technology run that he made the Bible to work with that technology all the time ago. Yeah. Some, some way like that. Basically, God knew how things were going to work, and he had control over um, history enough to make it work. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it's, it really is fascinating. I mean, you know, maybe that be a subject for another um, video, but it's, you know, we encourage you. I know it's we're, we're hitting an hour. We're probably good with just this introduction, but yeah. we definitely encourage you to start looking at numbers. Um, if you don't have a book like this handy or the – the website that we had up there it's really funny i've had to do this on my cell phone i've been out and i'm like oh sheesh i forgot the meaning of it maybe it's an obscure number like 15 or 22 or something yeah even if you look up it's really weird but the the psychics and different things if you look up the they call them angel numbers and stuff it'll still correspond and it's you know i would still double check later with the biblical numbers but numbers definitely yeah. are a universal language yeah I was saying too, like um, with the number for the world, uh, most of those things are man-made. We decide to see the world in, as a hemisphere of four different quadrants. Yeah. We decide to name the four major oceans, which is also why we've now renamed it to five major oceans. Yeah. So like that. But the point is, man has um, innately decided to name everything referring to the Earth in fours, and it might be a um, a natural instinct instilled by God. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Or it's it's because God always did it that we always did it kind of thing. Maybe he willed it. He he inspired people to do it that way. So people named the four oceans the four major oceans because God willed it to happen and therefore inspired those people to count it as only four and not three or five. Right. And who's to say much like Pluto or something that number five doesn't drop off again. Yeah. You know, it's just uh, things change. So it is fascinating that things did change, you know, but for some reason those finite things stayed the same. And also, now you mentioned the plants, I was thinking if you include Pluto, which people did for the longest time, that there's nine planets in the solar system, right? Uh, I'm not really tired. I have no idea. I think there is. Um, uh, is that counting Pluto? Yeah, but here's the thing. We're the third um, rock from the sun, as they say. Yeah. Um, which is, again, the, the planet in which God decided to put humans on. So three is the number for God. Yeah. So, which is also really interesting because you would think you'd put us as the fourth planet from the sun. But then we are technically the fourth thing in the universe if you include the sun. Yeah, that's true. So who knows? It, either way, it can kind of work. 
Well, I hope you Uranus know. is at number eight because it'd be new beginnings. I don't want to live on Uranus. Uh, I think Jupiter's seven. Let me think. Uh, we're third, so Mars. Uh, I think Jupiter is also Mars. Man, it's been a while. Yeah. I think Saturn, Uranus, uh, Neptune, and Pluto. I think that's how it works. Yeah. It's been so long. But but if you include Pluto, then there's nine planets, which is... Which would have to be nine, because this is an argument that Pluto is a planet, because divine completeness. And fruit of the spirit. Yeah. Um. So, but then also, if you include the sun, there's ten, which is, you know, law, testimony, all that. So then, if you if you don't include Pluto, but you include the Sun, then it's nine. And if you don't if you don't include the Sun, and also don't include um, Pluto, it's New Beginnings. Yeah. So I don't know how much of the a, a, a point there is. So not only that, but you keep finding more um, planet like things revolving around our universe. So there could actually be like eleven planets in our solar system. Yeah. You know, it, it's actually really strange. That we, they keep finding more planetoids they aren't going to consider them entire planets it's like how they decide that pluto doesn't count because it's too small right but they're finding other ones that are within orbit and have always been at orbit as far as they can tell and it, but it's too small to really count but then they might count it, it, there could be 12 planets in the solar system yeah you know stuff like that because i know um they know of at least yeah. one or two past pluto and it's like uh we've been hearing about that recently so well, maybe then there's that whole um, Planet X, too, everyone talks about. Yeah. So there's just, you know, that, that yeah, you could go on for some different things, especially with um, number of meanings. Yeah, and so that's why, like, looking at numbers, sometimes you really don't know what it means because you don't have the full picture yet. Right. So eventually, if humanity is able to explore our solar system enough to really, truly understand it, we might know the exact number of things and then know which one is the correct one. Right. And we don't know yet. That's why um, sometimes the numbers, you just say, wait. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I think, like, even he was mentioning the Bible code, why there's no way to know ahead of time. God just doesn't give you yeah. the entire picture up front. Some people get little glimpses here and there, but, uh, you know, we probably couldn't handle it. Yeah. But, so, the thing, too, you were mentioning, you can find the numbers uh, online, like what we're doing here on this screen. However, the reason for the book here being so important is not only does it give you a list of the numbers, but it gives you the reasoning for those numbers, the, right. meaning that this does not on here. So that's why this book's the one that we refer to because it actually gives you examples. Yeah. It explains to you why it matters. And I'll put a link on the video if I can find it. I think the last time I sent someone to find it, they couldn't. So. Yeah. Hopefully we can. It might be why this website put up at least a list of the numbers. Yeah. But that guy definitely uh, really put some study into it. Yeah. And that was when, you know, reading this book was when I went, well, he made such a good argument. You just can't deny it. So. Yeah, where was it written? 1998. Really? So oh. that's pretty old. Yeah. But yeah, so that, that's why... um. It's hard to find uh, online the reasoning for the numbers meaning. You just only yeah. find the meaning. So that's why the, this book is so important. If you're on the fence, you can at least read the book to really know for certain. Right. Because, you know, like going to it, you're just constantly given passages from the Bible all over in the pages. Right. And so it's like it's biblically minded. It's not it's not something of the world. It's of the Bible. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what we're discussing is biblical numerology, not you know n numerology. So, just yeah. a, a better way to understand the Bible as we go forward into like you know understanding Revelation a little bit more. You know, talking to some people tonight, they're like, "Oh, well, it's just confusing. Nobody understands it." Well, you can. You really can understand the majority of it if yeah. you have the tools and and look through different lenses than just reading it like a fantasy novel. So, but yeah, so this this video is probably a bit um, slow feeling because we're, we're not only retired, but every time we think of something, we're like, well, that's a, a different video subject, yeah, because <laughs> you know? we're going to talk about it's revelations. So so vast, you just can't cover it in a short conversation. Yeah, so we're constantly thinking of how do we approach this without cutting um, into a, a 
a rabbit trail that will go into its own video. Yeah. Well, we like we to need count to... the rabbit trails. Yeah, Just... but the point is we need to get the introduction done before we start going on those bunny trails. But then we feel like going on those bunny trails before we even finish explaining the whole thing. I know. You know? I think this whole <laughs> our whole show is bunny trails and what we come up with. Yeah. But yeah, so as I said at the beginning of the video, if you were on the fence, don't forget that you already already follow those the rules of the numbers and haven't realized it. And if you don't think you're of God, then why did God number all the passages? You yeah. know, I feel like those two things alone really made me go, yeah, this has to have some sort of meaning. Exactly. So, well, I guess we'll call that a wrap. Yeah. Uh, cause because it, we're just going to, anything more, we're going to be tired prattling on. I mean, some good stuff might come out of it. Yeah, but, I, I'm so racking my brain of different things to mention. It's like, but then I'm going to just make that new video. <laughs> yeah, and besides, Cuddles is trying really hard. I mean, pretty soon she's going to be slapping us in the face, you know, yeah. and, and purring at her, her top speed here just to make us go to sleep. And I'll be slurring my words, you know. Yeah. She, it's so funny because she does it on purpose. Like, when he tries to get up in the morning, as soon as his alarm goes off, she will cuddle up to your, tell him what she does to, you know, she knows her powers. So, typically, um, she, when she tries to sleep on the bed with me, She'll usually get like on top of my like my hip or something, and then she takes a little while. She might like nurse and try to get comfortable. She would she she take her time, her really sweet time of just trying to lay down and go. No, that wasn't right. Trying her best to kind of balance on there, or she might move up or down like the bed, so that she takes forever. However, in the mornings, if she's not on my bed, and then she hears the alarm clock, she comes running from out of nowhere, jumps and leaps and lands perfectly on my hip and lays down in, instantly. Yeah. Like she, she's able to get comfortable exactly when she wants to be, which means all the other times when she's really trying, she's like, I don't know, it's not very comfortable. Yeah. It's just her, like, just wasting my time because I know she can get comfortable instantly because she does when she knows I'm about to wake up. And then usually when she does that, I fall asleep and don't realize it. Yeah. Like, um, like I'll, I'll, look, I'll look at my phone and go, okay, my alarm went off, uh, uh, and it's like, it's like 10 in the morning, whatever. And then um, uh, 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 I'll, I'll look to see if she's on my lap, and I'll check my phone again, and it's 11 o'clock. I go, wait, what? Yeah, that's and why like, I said she erases your memory, like the blinky thing. Yeah, I'm like, I don't understand it. It's I was awake the whole time. I'm certain of it, you know? She does it to me, and she does it on purpose. It'll be later in the evening, and I'll settle down to like have a cup of coffee and relax. And she'll get in my lap, and the next thing you know, the phone rings, and I've been asleep for two hours, and I don't know what happened. Yeah, and a lot uh, when it does happen, sometimes I told the vet they need to study it. I was like, "Well, how is this possible?" Yeah, well, like sometimes she's not even on my lap. I go to check my phone, and then I, I feel her on my lap. I go to look, and then she's suddenly on my lap. I don't remember her being on my lap. Then I look at my phone, and an hour has passed. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, that doesn't happen when she's not on my lap. I don't lose track of time like that. Yeah. If I fall, if I fall asleep. I'm aware I fell asleep. I'm, it's never one of those things where I pass out and went, well, I didn't realize I passed out. I was like, yeah, yeah. I knew I passed out. Well, I'm not a <laughs> napper. I don't ever nap, yeah. you know. And so the fact that I wasn't even tired and then, and I just, she gets on my lap. And the funny thing is now she knows and I know. And yeah. she'll work hard. She'll crawl up higher. She'll get on my chest. She'll start, you know, you are going down, lady. I mean, <laughs> so, you know, and it's just crazy. So when she was at the vet, I, I tried to explain this. Of course, the vet is thinking, and she said, oh, all cats make people sleep. I go, no, this is something different. My husband has experienced it where he sat down, not tired at all, fully wired, going to watch a, you know, really action-packed movie, and he wakes up, the movie's over, and he doesn't know what happened. Yeah. You know, and there she is on his lap, and I'm like, she got you. So that's what we call her Ambien because she's she. If there's something I'm like, we don't know if it's the frequency. She's not even purring. It's not that. So yeah, it's just some. You know, she did it to the kids too. Yeah, and I got like really emphasize that like we're insomniacs more than anything. Yep. We don't fall Obviously asleep. Obviously, it's three forty. You know, <laughs> three. Yeah, it's three fourteen, and I'm not even tired feeling. Yeah. Um, but if, if she's on my lap, I might start feeling tired. Yeah. And, but the thing is, is that. I mean, I'm getting kind of like the room is spinning because she's sitting on my lap. Yeah. It's cause and effect. If she's, she, I've only ever passed out or felt tired when she's on my lap. Uh, but then like if the dog or the other cat is on my lap, ne Nothing. never. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're, they're rarely ever on my lap, you know, but the point is like, it's, it's not an issue except for with her. 
and she knows when to turn it off or on uh-huh. and she also knows um she also uses it for evil because she if i'm yep. actually really tired she won't turn on that power she's she'll, she'll she would like lay on my bed but she'll lay on top of me she'll like kind of lay a distance away or or she'll leave the bed and i can't fall asleep but in, in other mornings where i don't have work in the morning she'll be on my lap but i'm not that tired but when, when it's, she knows you have to work, she knows. Yeah, and the thing is, um, she knows when I have to work, and she really dislikes it. You can tell um, on mornings where I have to work, she's following me around. She's trying to like trip me because she's walking between my feet. She's meowing at me, and she's like begging the, the, for me to stay. Uh-huh. Um, and then like when I come home from work, she's already at the door waiting for me. And she's trying to jump on her lap at every moment she gets. Yep, and it's just like, oh, I'm making you go to sleep so you can't ever go to work again. But then if it's a day I don't have to work, uh, she doesn't give me that kind of attention. She just knows that on a day I have to work, I'll be gone, and she misses me. Well, that's because she's not bothering you. She's after me. Yeah, but the point is she clearly misses me and is aware of my work schedule and when I have to work. And is aware of the things that... Um, alert me to go to work or also alerting her that I'm going to work. Well, and also you can't use Miss Energy Vampire like a sleeping pill because I'm like, <laughs> well, you know, I'll take her, you know, we don't really allow any animals in the bedroom, but I was having a bad trouble sleeping one night and I go, well, she could sleep with me. She wouldn't, it didn't happen. You know, <laughs> and she was sitting on my legs and I'm three hours later sitting there going, why am I not falling asleep? What, you know, so it's like she has to decide. Yeah, and so, she's next to your legs, you know she does want it. If she wants it, she'll be on your lap yeah. or your hip or your chest. You know. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> you know, but yeah, mainly your lap because I mean, Mike just doesn't. You know, he used to say, "No, that's not true." It's not, and then it's happened to him too many times. Yeah, we actually it's to the point where we're like, "Nope, not right now." She jumps on her lap. We're like, "Nope, nope." We hand him to somebody else. We're like, "You go to sleep." You know? Yeah, you can tell because she can be forceful. She if she wants you to sleep. She'll make sure that, like, when she gets on your lap, she doesn't take her time. She immediately lays down. Mm-hmm. She makes sure to sprawl out and hold you down. She'll feel heavier than normal. Yep. You know, she actually is completely in control of herself and is able to do this specifically to block you because she knows you're about to leave. Yeah, I know? swear she can pull weight in from the universe and gain <laughs> five pounds at will. Because sometimes she feel, you don't feel, feel her at all when she jumps your lap because she's so tiny. And other times it felt like a bowling ball fell on you. You yeah. know, and I'm like, I don't, I, like I, I said, they need to study it. And I'm like, we need to figure it out because if you could, you know, put that into some kind of pillow and turn it on at will, you know, that'd be the greatest thing ever. Yeah, like she, she's, but like I said, she uses it for evil because she's very controlling. She knows if you have to leave or even if it's just to go to yep. the bathroom. She's like, no, no, you're not allowed to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been trying to leave, you know, for an appointment or something, and she knows, and it's not like a, she jumps up and I'm trying to put makeup on or something. It's like she knows ahead of time, and she'll just kind of look at me, and she'll get also super cute. But if she's desperate, she doesn't get cute. She just, like he says, leaps out of nowhere, blam, right on you. And yeah. whatever she does, you're like, <sighs> five minutes later. Basically, she's already in a laying down position before she, she lands. She lands, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, water going through the space shuttle and landing because it's just like morphs into a laying <laughs> position that she's already you know like if, if she's gonna lay in your arm like a baby she's already in that position before she lands yeah it's really weird and she's not normally like that normally she's like a cat jumps on your lap then gets kind of comfortable then slowly lays down or yeah. sometimes she'll lay down but it's like she's just slipping so she repositions so he doesn't slip and then lay down yeah. like it's, it's usually a process but when she wants it to, it's never a process. It's instant. Because it's she's, like, you're going down. I because, don't care what it takes. Because she knows that um, if you're trying to stand up and she's on your lap, you're going to push her off because she's standing up and she's you just she'll walk up, off, you know? But if she's laying down, you need to just like, wait. You have to actually lift her up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what we're struggling with when we're like, oh, no, it's cuddles. Because we're like, she's going to make us sleepy and we can't do this. So, yeah. but yeah, we well, we just wanted to throw in that little, you know, mm. what we're dealing with with cuddles. I mean, she's just the most adorable cat in the world, but she yeah. has superpowers of some sort, <laughs> you know. And so that's why we're like, you take her, <laughs> you know. And she's obviously was not turning it on tonight, but if she had stayed longer, she would have. I mean, she's, yeah. you know, so... She ran off now. She's probably eating, getting energy to, to zonk one of us out. <laughs> so, but I mean, it's, we're thankful. We are. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it, it, animals make your life so much better. And, 
you know, they remind you so much of God's love because it's unconditional and you can be a complete jerk and your cat loves you. So, yeah, you know, or your dog loves you and even your goldfish might love you. I don't know, but we don't deserve animals like, as, as a human species. We're just nasty, mean, and they're not. Yeah. You know, so, well, we're going to get out of your hair, yeah. you know. Well, also, the other thing, too, her name is Cuddles. We didn't name her that, but whoever uh -huh. did knew the superpower was sure. Well, maybe that's why she was returned to the pound six times. That could be it. Now, she was a stray. Like a bar. I, when I went to get her at PetSmart, they're like, oh, you don't want her. She's a barn cat. She's feral. Like, she's been returned six times. Now that we know this cat, that's not possible. She would have survived on her yeah, own. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, and I, I asked them, I go, why is her name Cuddles? Did you guys name her that? No, that was a name we got her. I went, that makes no sense. Like, this is this evil, feral cat who tears faces off or something, but she was named Cuddles. Yeah, which is a accurate to how she acts with us, which yeah. makes it even more baffling that you want to return her. Like, who named her Cuddles? Because they, they, they know that she that's how she acts. It's not like they named her that randomly. They knew yeah. the name it because it's how she acts. I think acts. you're right. That she, they, she kept knocking people out and they couldn't take it. Yeah, so a cat they named Cuddles because she's cuddly was returned to the pound for some reason. Yeah. And it's like, I don't get that. It didn't. Just, it's it, like an over clingy boyfriend, maybe. Yeah, maybe he couldn't like, handle it. I can't take it no more. Get <laughs> off me. You know, I'm going to find you a new be, home. To be returned six times after that, what? What is wrong with people? Is it like really not her fault? <laughs> no. Yeah. So she's like I said, it's weird. Yeah, you know, we just we question this all the time. We're like, why? I mean, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. So but we love her to death, and she's turned like thirteen, so she's getting older on us. Yeah. That's Although crazy. that has not weakened the. In fact, if anything, it made the force stronger with that one. Whatever it is she has. Yeah, because she didn't used to do knock us out. It became a progressively stronger thing over yeah. time. Yeah, we would kind of notice we were sleepy, but we're, we're talking full on knock out. But again, you can't get it when you need it. So yeah, it used to only like affect her. Now it's starting to affect me. <laughs> yeah, and I've seen it because you know I'm like, I'll go in Gabe. You know, it's time to go to work. Okay, and he'll look at the phone, check the time. You know, and I go outside and feed the animals or something, and I come in and oh, he went to work, and I'm like, I better check on him, and he's out, and she's on his chest. And, I'm and like, she wasn't there before. And I couldn't wake him up. I mean, I can't when she's... I'm like <laughs> physically pulling him up. And he's like, I don't know. I mean, he won't know where he is or who he is. Yeah, I know. It's and she's clinging like this leech. That's, that's another thing, too. Um, it's, she erases your memory. She's also really good at balancing. That's why, like, when I say she has to kind of massage and then she kind of lowers the physical heart lay down so he jumps up back up because he has to kind of find her footing because she's like trying to balance gently on like a, 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 a on a moving surface, but when it comes to it, she has perfect balance. Yeah, she's you I, can't like, get rid of her. I, I, I sleep on my side, and she's sitting on my hip, and like, it's not the widest surface. And you can see that she's kind of wiggly, but she manages to stay on there. Then when I turn over to roll my other side, she yep. stays on the entire time. She does not roll off. She actually rolls a counter she to my does. rolling. I've seen her do it. I mean, she was she got in her room one morning. And my husband was asleep. I'm like, I better get her out because she's not supposed to be in here. And she's on his hip, and he's rolling in his sleep, and she's here. And as he rolls, it literally she just stays, and then she slowly rolls back up. It's like a gyro. Yeah. I mean, I'm just like, I don't know how she does it, but this the skill developed over time. Yeah. Because you used to be able to throw her off real easy, and she had terrible. She couldn't stay on you if you tried. Yeah. But now she has like really honed her craft she's like this cat sleep ninja well it used to be like it's just sleep, sleep her hips is precarious so any movement and she felt like she was about to uh, fall off uh, uh it's like you know when you were falling asleep and your chair falls backwards you jerk awake yeah that's yeah, what she acted like where if you shifted a little bit and she started losing her balance she would quickly jump off you out of, out of fear of falling over yeah but then over I don't think time, she cares anymore. She's like, run me over. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. Then it then it became a, a thing of if you rolled over, she'd just roll off you. She's like, yeah, you're you're rolling over. I'll just I'll take the landing. I'll I'll roll when I hit the ground. Yeah. That kind of thing. But somehow, now she now rolls you counter to your rolling, so she never actually moves from her position in space. It's crazy. <laughs> like I said, it should be studied with science. Yeah. You know, I mean, I we couldn't explain it to the vet anymore. She's like, oh, cats do that. I'm like. Mm -mm. <laughs> 
I was like, I, gosh, can you imagine if Abby did that? Oh, I know. You have to picture Abby's, like, you know, Cuddles is. We just weighed her almost seven pounds. Abby's double that. Plus, she's the size, half the size of my uh, Black Lab dog. If she roll over on you, she'd probably break a bone. Also, and, too, if you shift it all, she would grab her claws into you and, and, and like, yeah. tell you to hold still or, or try to grab onto you. Cuddles, she doesn't have to grip or, or she barely uses her feet. She's able to counter roll with barely using her feet at all. Yeah. And she doesn't have to like cling on to you because she feels like she's falling off. And it's like it's most nuts. cats, if they felt like they're falling off, their natural instinct would be to claw in and then start climbing with their claws to keep from falling. Yeah. But she doesn't. She just counter rolls. Well, Abby, what Abby would do if you rolled over while she was sleeping on you, <laughs> she'd go up your face and claw you in the face and yeah. smack you across the face for daring to move and interrupt her beauty sleep. Yeah, exactly. You know, so well, I'm sure you don't want to hear about our cats all night, but we just want to let you know. <laughs> well, what we're you up can cut against. this off as a separate, separate video. Yeah, we just, we just want to know you what we're up against because it's just not normal. <laughs> yeah, you know, she's like normal, but not normal. Yeah, you know. We, so she's really cute, but her oddities seem to keep finding more. Like she develop develops more oddities over time. Yeah, because she didn't used to be like this, and she decided to be like this. Yep. It's, it's really endearing, but it's also, like, feels impossible. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, there's energy vampires, and cats always make people sleepy or comfortable or relaxed, but this is something, like, alien. I mean, it's not right. Yeah, because usually the idea is that they make you sleepy and comfortable because they're a, a weight that's warm, warm on you. and even Or the they're purring. purring. Yeah, she doesn't have to purr. It's just you're going out. Not only that, but... Um, before she got healed, she was sick and was weightless practically. Yeah. Which means she didn't feel her on your lap. Which means she she wasn't really warm enough and wasn't heavy enough to actually cause that natural effect that make you yeah. tired. Which means it had to be coming from a different source of energy vampirism. Yeah. So I don't know. She just, uh, it's not, I mean, it's not your typical cat <laughs> situation at all. You know, and it was a lot more like she was a pancake with bones, yeah. which for a long time and fur. I mean, honestly, it was like roadkill on you. Yeah. You know, she's doing so much better. So now we can actually feel her on, you know, she gets on our lap so we can feel it. And that feels heavy because it's like, get off me, you're heavy. It's it's a different yeah. thing. But before when she weighed nothing, she could sneak on you and you didn't know it. I, I would literally be on the phone and... Where'd this cat come from? When I got off the phone, I, you couldn't feel her sneaking on. And that was part of her superpowers because you'd try to keep her off and you wouldn't notice she was on you. Yeah, and there are some times, too, where she wants to be on your lap. You're like sitting down, like maybe cross leg or whatever, and you have your hands on, your, uh, on you. And um, she, she's trying her best to find a position. And you're like, I don't want you. So you start shifting and moving your arms and moving your legs and try to try to make it impossible for her to lay on you yeah. so she'd just leave. But she still somehow finds a way. I, I don't know how to explain this Well, properly. the other night it was a first. I refused to let her on me because I had too many appointments. And so she disappears. I'm like, good, I got rid of her. Next thing I, I notice is she's up here. And she crawls down um, down my shoulder to get on me. That was a first. <laughs> and I it was kind of, she looked at me like, oh no, this is on. <laughs> and she just bats her eyelashes, rolls over and flop. <laughs> you know, and I was like, all right, you worked too hard for that when she had me. Well, I had times where I'm literally moving my legs around and my arms, and she's somehow able to cling on. It's just like kind of rolling with my arms. Yeah. Like she's already determined so much that she's going to lay down that she laid down on my rolling arms, and then it's just rolling with them in order to um, stay on. I'm like, there's nowhere for you to sit. And she's like climbing up my arm and like finding clearances. So I kind of shift my arm out and then she flops the other way. Yeah. Like if she wants to be on your lap, nothing will stop her. Nope. Like even, even if you're constantly, like if she's laying down and you're still moving and she's just constantly moving, she, she doesn't, doesn't care. care anymore. Yeah. No, she got, we used to be like, you know, if you moved one it's like leg. sleeping on a boat that's like during the storm. You yeah. Know? She's, I mean, that's why she didn't mind the car, I guess. But, you know, normally if she got on one leg and you lifted the other in her seat, she'd flop off and she'd leave. But she, I watched her over time learning to balance and she would just roll from leg to leg. We trained her accidentally. Yeah, we, we did. Because it, it used to be like the slightest shift. Like if you, if you're like your leg was sore, so you started moving it in order to get the blood flowing again. Um, 
that slight movement would scare her, and she'd just leap as far as she could away and yeah. run across the house. Not anymore. Yeah, now she's like, whatever. You can you can shift from one leg on top of the other one to like this, and she just stay on still. Yeah, she even even if you're sitting like Indian style, and move your legs. She finds a way. I, yeah. I mean, that's just it's sometimes cute. she crawls up your arm in order to get off the legs. You know? And when it's safe, she crawls back down. Yeah, I don't know cats, but like I said, it should be studied. I mean, you know, <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna do when she passes away. We won't ever get inadvertent sleep. Yeah, we'll, we'll be even more insomniacs than ever before. Yeah, yeah. So maybe that's the gift from God. Like once in a while, she knocks us out, so we have to get some sleep. So. Yeah. Well, we should probably let you guys go, and I I definitely need to try to get some sleep. So, um, anyways, God bless you guys. I hope you find this interesting. Uh, please give us comments. You know, they help with our placement on YouTube, but also, you know, it helps give us some direction of what we're doing, or we can answer your questions as well. Yeah, get, you, so know. you you have to leave a comment. I I think we have to really kind of like almost enforce that. Because not enough people are actually leaving comments. We don't actually know if the videos are reaching people anymore because of that. Yeah. It um because if you aren't familiar, YouTube can just suppress a video. It might get like one person saw it, but most people won't get it even if they're subscribed. Yeah. Um, so you have to leave a comment so we know it's actually being sent out to people. Yeah. People are actually seeing it. Plus, leaving a comment is really good because. We want to know what you guys thought of the video, if you have any questions or any other theories, or we just need you to write a comment. So there's comments on the video, so more people are inclined to comment, right. or um, at least the video is getting comments, and therefore it's being pushed out to further people besides the ones that are uh, subscribed. Right. Yeah, it would definitely help, and it helps not only placement, but uh, our direction and, you know, what your thoughts are on things definitely help us. We want... We don't want this to be something for you guys. We're not doing this for us, so yeah. you know we need some feedback. Yeah, because like without comments, it feels like we're just throwing this video out to the air. It feels like we're just doing it for ourselves. And every once in a while, someone might comment, and "Go, okay, well, someone just happened to be watching our project." But like that's not how we want it to be. We want it to be we're working to get to help people, and to, we also want to hear their feedback because several times now in videos we mentioned how we want someone to help us out. Because we're not quite sure on the subject. You want more information yeah. from someone who might be an, an expert on the field. Definitely. Stuff like that. So we want comments just to kind of jog our brains, get, you know, get some connections going of like, hey, I heard about this uh, thing and it has this number associated with it. go, oh, we didn't hear about that thing. Yeah. That kind of stuff. And that's actually, you know, I'm too busy to do a lot of research and it's friends sending me things that I've been getting a lot of feedback on these videos from friends with uh, private messages and things sending me links they found that were related or something but we need you to do that on YouTube or Rumble something like that just I know it seems redundant and silly to not send it to me if you want to send it to me that's fine put it on the, the uh, comments as well you know yeah. it's uh, but that is honestly how I get a lot of my information you know and then I'll research it once I get it I, I've not had to do you know look for things too much anymore because so many people send me stuff that if i find it interesting or think you know this is a great piece of news i'll then research it so you know i stay pretty well ahead of things that way so i appreciate it but definitely it helps us out you know to have feedback actually on the video sites yeah and it is kind of unfortunate that there's so many different websites we're using which means even if we had a lot of commenters they to be scattered about and not working together. Yeah. So sometimes it feels like um, if a video like the, the Meteor one is popular and everyone's commenting in the same place, we can maybe get some real um, answers from that because yeah. someone might actually be able to figure it out for us. Um, but because they're going to be split up among all these different um, uh, places, it's kind of unfortunate that they're not going to be talking to each other. So we're not going right. to get enough um action in that sense well we'll have to see where it goes right now we're just trying to get it out there on different platforms if one ends up being the most popular we'll just stay on that one you know yeah, I we're, mean, just, we're just kind of you know uh feeling the field here yeah we'll probably still always have a backup oh yeah yeah, yeah. so Alrighty, well, that was kind of our, you know, uh, like, comment, and subscribe for the night. But <laughs> yeah. uh, we love you guys. God bless, and we will see you next week. Bye. <laughs>